Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing the circular weapon picture. This looks like crap, I know, but I'm not a UX designer, I'm a fucking programmer. So, we're going to do two takes on this. The first one will be with a controller, like the true Ratchet and Clank. What the hell? Okay. Like the two Ratchet and Clank is made in the console. And we're going to do a take with a mouse and a keyboard. Just because some stuff do not work as expected with a mouse. For example, the axis value input right there. Most of the times in the console it's something constant like minus one, yada yada yada. While in mouse it can be just zero. So yeah, you'll get why this happens in a little bit, so I will chat about this in more depth in the next tutorial, so let's get into it. So I made a UI folder and circular weapon picker. Now, this is a canvas panel inside the root canvas panel with some borders. Now, each of these borders has got an anchor point and some margin spaddings. Each of uh, the large kind of panel is uh, with the center, as you can see, 50% anchor point, size X and Y, and position X and position Y minus half of the size. This applies to the buttons as well, except the, the top ones and these that are on the edges because we don't want them to go out of the screen or we don't want to see have them, but these are really basic UI stuff, you already, you already need to know them. And inside the inner canvas panel, we've got a couple of borders, eight of them actually, so yeah, take a look at the anchor points real quick, I'll just pause the video if you want to re replicate them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And each of these buttons is of size 50 and 50 with a position of minus 25, minus 25, except the top one which has like no position Y because if we do this minus 25, it would go half of the screen. So yeah, you just want this centered on the pivot points, these four in the middle ones, and these ones go like that. So. All of them has also got this checkbox up here that is variable so we can access them right there on the graph and that's basically it so if we go back on the graph there is a huge amount of stuff I want to talk about now these variables these ones with the mouse and the mouse functions are for the next video of course I will first going to talk about the control so first things first project settings input gun picker new action map and gamepad face button top which is the triangle or the y button if you're using an xbox controller an xbox 360 controller which you should use because it's the one that just works so yeah basically each stick we calculate inside this circle how many degrees we want uh, our controller input or mouse input is because for each 45 degrees we want to switch to the next box because if you do 360 divided by 8 which is like a circle divided by 8 times you'll end up with 8 45 degree pieces it's basic trigonometry as well so this is how we determine the degrees. This kind of inverse of what I would actually present the tutorial, but bear in mind. So we get the controller value on the y axis and the control value of the x axis. Then we do the at and to method, which does exactly what we want to do the degrees. Then we go back and determine the index. So we first clamp the degrees to minus 360 to 360 we set it if it's negative we want to add the circle so it's like positive every time if it's not we just continue so we grab the degrees uh, 
vi variable and we perform a divide operation with whole and remainder but we just want the whole right there so every 45 degrees the index is going to go up and you'll see what why we use an index so these borders that are inside the circle I initialize an array on the beginning which is this one so this is like 0 to 45 degrees this one 45 degrees more this one 45 degrees more this one yada 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 so it's like counterclockwise starting from this greened out border right there and yeah then we choose to we have a another function called highlight only index which is essentially looping through all the border list array items which we initialized previously and just highlights the zero one which is what we're going to start for this thing and yeah we use this uh, when we're picking as well so back there down on the highlight only index we want our player to see what he's actually picking so we he can pick exactly so loops through everything if uh, the index the current index of the array matches our provided index then it gets highlighted with set brush color if not it just goes back to neutral which is white or black or whatever you want to do completed and there's our return node so we finish doing this now I know what you're probably thinking hey how do we get the controller X and Y values well this happens from our third person character here on our move forward axis we add a new pin on the on the sequence on both of them actually and if our weapon picker widget is visible that means in other words if it's active we do the controller x and y pass through note this is y and x not x and y and yeah we just pass around the axis value just like that with our reference to it that's basically it. We also do a check here if it's visible because we do not want to do unnecessary calculations when the player is not picking a weapon. So essentially it's just idling. We've got the last thing I want to cover, the gun pick end event. So the third person character calls it again, calls this again right there. I will cover about this logic in the next minute. So bear with me here. When the gun picking event ends, we get the pawn and we call the gun equip event. This is passing around an actor class value, not an actual reference of an actor, because it's supposed to be the template of the gun that we are then going to construct in the third person character, but this is going to happen in future tutorials. They're right there. That's why I created this weapon blueprint class which is supposed to be the power class of full guns, of all the weapons. This makes sense if you've got slight touch with programming, which you should have because you're making games. And yeah, that's basically it. Now, why do we do this every tick? Because we want this to be responsive to the player's actions and we don't want to have the player try to move a cursor and click it and do other stuff. So. The last thing I want to cover about for the UI, because it's meant to be independent from the character. We initialize our gun slots array. It's the same size as the border list array, that means with 8 elements. So, we initialize it right there with just weapon classes. It's essentially everything the same thing. We're going to later provide this gun slot array from our third person character because we've got several guns that we want to pick. We want to be able to change which guns we need to pick with the quick access menu so the player doesn't have to go in deeper sub menus, clicking equip and all this crazy stuff. That's what this menu is, gonna, is meant for. Now, as soon as the player holds down the Y button, the menu appears. As soon as he releases it, the menu goes away and also the gun pick event gets called. You can move 
your left thumbstick as you can see here and you can change like the items you can you actually change the index which gets highlighted as you can see it was it works flawlessly you can check it out with your own controller if you replicate it this uh, logic is called by gun picker in production so respectively if it's pressed or released we set the visibility of the weapon picker widget then if we want to enable the menu we set it to visible and we set input mode to game and UI but we do not want a focus widget and we also want to lock the mouse to the viewport and hide the cursor because it's bad so why do we choose not to focus a, a widget not to focus our weapon picker widget because if we do the released part of the input action is going to be called immediately and we do not want this to happen because it will screw up our logic now when the player chooses the gun and chooses to release uh, this input action we set the visibility to hidden grab our input mode back to game and call this event so the whole logic ends this will then do some stuff right here like return our weapon template and pass it back to the character right there so we can like spawn the actor apply and up apply upgrades if any yada 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 and there you go you've got yourself a menu now next tutorial we're going to talk about how we're going to use our actual mouse because we're playing we're playing this game on a computer not a freaking console and we want stuff to work on both of them so yeah that's something you need to bear in mind if you want your project to be cross-platform so i will show you another easy way which is kind of the same logic the only logic that changes is the degree calculation part and some initialization stuff and that's basically it see you in the next tutorial